right in the middle of here. Is he walking in now? Yeah. <clears throat> I'd like to uh, like to call the meeting to order. Um, let me get on. I'll try to bring the microphone close here so everybody can hear me. Um, welcome, everyone. It is August 18th. This is a Board of Selectmen meeting. And um, I'd like to call the meeting to order and introduce our panelists. Please, if everybody could, you know, silence your cell phones. That would help us out. When, uh, uh, any, any interruptions might, you know, hurt the, hurt the process. So we'll just take everything as we go here. So um, first, you know, if anybody, so I'm familiar with me. My name is Sean Renier. I'm the chairman of the select board, so I'll be running the meeting. Um, to my left here is Bob Jones, and to my right is Gordon Bailey. We make up the three-member select board, um, and we're holding this forum for everyone. To my far left over here, we have Chris Britton. He's our town administrator. Um, and then to my far right, we have town council. Pollard and uh, uh, Chris Myram, who is our newly hired in, in environmental attorney. Um, so that's, um, that's sort of the introduction of who we are. Um, at this point, Bob, if you'd like to say anything, or Gordon, after Bob has a chance, if you guys would either like to make any comments, feel free. Yeah, I'd like to thank everybody for being here. Uh, this is an opportunity for, for us tonight, a, a long-awaited opportunity. We're here to get some work done. We're, it's a, uh, this is a, an issue that's caused a lot of anger and consternation and frustration, and uh, I understand that, we understand that, but we're here to do work tonight. And I'm asking you, I'm, I'm, I'm making a request that we we keep keep our tempers. We're here to we're here to listen. You're here to ask questions, uh, but think about it. You you need to listen too because this is a really big issue for the town of Lee, and we have to come to a decision on this, uh, and fairly soon. And that's why we're here. We've had two and a half years of muddling around. And uh, we have a lot of opinions. This is a multifaceted problem. And we have an opportunity here tonight to, to address those questions. And I'm looking to you personally for some help in how to move forward. And I hope you can do that for us tonight. Thank you. No, I think, uh, I think you summed it up very well. And uh, we're really here to find out what our legal issues, what the legal issues are. Um, you know, we already know everybody's here, and most people, almost everybody I know in town anyway, doesn't want to have a dump in town. So it's really about, is there a way to separate this? So uh, we'll, we'll get some explanations about the differences between the permit that the EPA issued versus the Rest of River Agreement, and we need to know how each one is impacted by any kind of legal actions we may choose or choose not to do. So thank you. Thanks for coming. There you go, Chairman. All right, um, now that we've done some introductions and got a chance to set the tone here, I just want to remind everybody, go through the meeting guidelines here. Like both Bob and Gordon said, the, por the purpose of this meeting is to discuss legal options and impact of the Rest of River Agreement. We're not here to go backwards and talk about why we got here. The fact of the matter is here we are and you know how do we go forward so that's kind of uh from the start um then we're gonna move into uh questions uh i'm oh, sorry just uh just a kind of decorum questions for the panel should be limited to the stated purpose like i just said above questions and comments i'll be i'll be lenient but we're gonna be here all night if if everybody talks for 20 minutes so please three three to five minutes would be preferred um, and I'll keep a timer here. Um, and when you um, will address comments, we do have a list of questions here that um, we got in advance, and we'll sort of address those first, and then we'll open the floor to any additional questions that you may have. 
Um, <clears throat> if you do, at that point, if you do have questions, we have a microphone here so that everybody at home can hear you. We can, everybody can hear the questions. Please come down to the microphone. I know it's a, a little intimidating, but get right on it, right, right like this. Don't, don't talk back here, he can't hear you. Right, you gotta be right on the mic, okay? Um, and we'll we'll start with uh, we we're gonna we're gonna hope to keep it to Lee residents, but you know I, there may be some other folks in the in the crowd, so um, we'll do our best to make sure everybody's heard. Um, yeah, and like like uh, to that, we're gonna try to make everybody who wants to be heard here tonight heard. If we don't get a chance and we go along and it winds up, hey, you know, we need to do this, continue it into another night, we will. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think, um, that about takes me, um, to the end here. I'd just like to, uh, inform everyone. We do have CTSB here. Audio visual recording is, uh, is happening. Um, so with that, I think we can, unless there's anything else from the board, we can move right into questions that we have in advance here. Um, so I'll sort of, I guess, I guess I'll just begin and we can kind of take this list down. Um, first question that we got in, would the select board consider allocating town funds to hire a grassroots and advocacy coordinator to help organize and represent the interests of the majority of voters from Lee to withdraw from the rest of River Agreement and stop a PCB dump from being placed in our town? First question. Good question. I would I would open it up if anybody has thoughts. Gordon, you want to? Yeah, sure. I think number one, we have sort of already done that. Uh, in that we have already hired uh, an environmental attorney so who is also going to be responding to some of the, uh, this isn't really a super legal question, but I mean the real legal questions will uh, defer to him. And um, so just know that we've already, we've already hired someone. So hopefully that answers it. Um, there's, we need to, as we go through the evening, we're going to hear legal answers to the legal questions to see about the difference between the rest of the river agreement and the permit that's issued and how they interact with each other. So I think the rest of this particular question is kind of going to be answered by the attorney in a little bit. So, um, and as far as advocacy coordinator, I think we need the answers to uh, other legal questions before we decide to do that particular uh, that particular action, because um, we don't yet know how the Rest of River Agreement and the PCB permit are tied together. I think we need to know that, and then we can come back to this question. So I'd like to sort of do it that way. And we do have uh, Mr. Bloom. Uh, I think has a question. If he, yeah, if you could come to the mic, though. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Josh yeah. Bloom, 204 West Park Street here in Lee. And I just wanted to clarify, because Gordon, I think you're skirting the question completely. Oh, I'm not trying to. Um, I asked about not a lawyer, but a grassroots organizer and yeah. advocacy coordinator. If you look around the room, we see less than 50 people here. Yeah. We have f about 5,000 people in our town, and we, not, we need a legal front, but we also need somebody whose job it is to do the grassroots organizing of, of collecting names, of, of mobilizing people to take action, not in the courtroom, but in, a, in the community, so that we, when we need to mobilize people and to show up, we do that. And we haven't had anybody coordinating the townspeople to do that. So that's my question, not about a lawyer. All right. Um, yeah, I think, I think we'll, we'll, we'll go down here to the next question um, because I think there's just a lot that we'll kind of work our way through here. Um, somewhat more of a legal question. Yeah. I think we need to come back to that once we understand because the town, can I, yeah. a second. we also need to know whether um, any official action by this board and the town 
uh, to go forward has any legal ramifications or negative impacts on the town before we take a move like that, because I think it's a great thing to keep in mind. And it's whether or not, as a governmental function, we should be involved in that, or whether it needs to remain a grassroots function so that we don't find ourselves between a rock and a hard place as far as the agreement goes or the permit goes. So I, I'm more than happy to come back to this once we understand the impacts of the other questions. So I'm, not try I'm certainly not trying to skirt what, what you said, but thank you. Well, and, and just to the, to this question too, Josh, you know, it's it's not the select board's sole discretion about like how certain funds are are allocated. You know, we would need town meetings approval to have funds available for something like this, because um, I don't think that we we would be able to act out on our own and just you know take funds from something else to do that. That's um, so that's part of the process, I think. Um, Moving on to the next question, does uh, the Lee Planning Board have any authority to stop the dump based on current regulations and town bylaws? Uh, further in this question, are there zoning or planning bylaws, revi bylaw revisions that could be introduced that could stop the dump from being built and used? Um, I, I would, I would uh, yield to our legal representation to kind of advise us on the planning board's role, sure. if any, that they could have. So this this uh, question actually has been um, put pen to paper when we tried to do the bylaw to ban uh, PCBs, and the age, the attorney general uh, rejected our bylaw. That was in a letter um, dated January eighteenth of twenty twenty two. Uh, we're in the uh, the AG's office. Rejected our bylaw. I think the question really is whether the building inspector can do something once we have a bylaw in place. And um, I think the common consensus from every lawyer you ask about this is going. It's going. You're going to hear a lot about this tonight. Is preemption, which is uh, both in terms of the DEP's authority and the EPA's authority. So. Um, there are two levels of preemption. First is the state level. So if a state uh, regulatory scheme regulates certain activities, the towns don't have any jurisdiction over it. Uh, and then the second level is federal. So if a federal scheme of regulatory um, regulations and governance uh, is involved, the town and the state can be preempted. Uh, this, in this instance, the the EPA uh, and the DEP, uh, the DEP is, is a, has approved this permit, and uh, obviously the EPA is taking the position that they that this is that they've issued the permit, and uh, I can tell that this this town and this board that they're definitely going to reject if we try to overturn that by way of local zoning regulation or local bylaw regulation. So specific to this question, the planning board um, does not have authority to, to, to uh, and I think that's the, in, the real in, in, intent of this question is to, to enact a zoning bylaw um, as a regulation to uh, stop the dump from being built. Go ahead, Monica, Ann, if you'd like to come to the microphone, please. Uh, and I, I may have failed to mention this, but please, for the for everybody, identify yourself and just give us. Okay. Go ahead. All right. To that point, my name is Monica Ryan, 165 Laurel, and um, the Board of Health. I know they didn't ask in that question about the Board of Health but that would be a, another level where I feel that would overrule the federal and the state as was discussed in the Board of Health meeting. And that may come up further in this meeting. Um, I'm sure there are questions about that. It will. But I wanted to point out that though the planning board may not, perhaps the Board of Health would still overrule the federal and the state. Thank you. And do you have something? Ann Langless, Union Street. 
Um, my question is for the lawyer, and I'm sorry I did not get your name. Uh, my name's Chris Myron, Jeremiah Pollard. Thank you, Chris. So my question to you, uh, Chris, um, in regards to this particular question is, um, have you had any experience with uh, environmental cases that actually have gone to trial, that have had this kind of a situation where you have either had experience that they have been able to overrule this preemptive law with either the federal or the state with putting in place regulations or bylaws? Um, I, I'd answer, I, I think you have um, a unique set of circumstances here, um, but the answer to your question is no, I have not tried such a case. Um, I've certainly uh, been involved in cases where the supremacy clause was involved. And uh, the um, um, uh, primacy of federal law over local law. And typically in those cases that you had experience, has it typically been the outcome is that the federal and the state overrule the town with their bylaws? Yeah, I would agree with, I would agree with Mr. Pollard on that, yes. Okay, thank you. All right, I'm going to jump right down to uh, the health board question here because we seem to be right on that. Um, do boards of health under authority of Mass General Law Chapter 111 uh, have superseding authority of the constitutional supremacy law in which a board of health in Mass has preemption over the EPA? Again, I would, I, I would yield to our legal representation on that question. You want to take that one? Or go on. Okay. I'll, I'll chime in. I have seen um, correspondence, I think, from Mr. Gray and from Attorney Cristobo um, Boniface raising um, um, two sections of Chapter 111 of the Massachusetts General yeah, Laws. Chris, Chris, get right on the mic. Yeah, Closer to the bring, mic? Yeah, bring it right I'm sorry. Okay, um, sections 31 and sections 143. Um, there is a lot of language in a case called Arthur D. Little versus uh, Commissioner of uh, Health and Hospitals of Cambridge um, that emphasizes strongly the importance of boards of health and their authority with respect to local police power, specifically the public health and safety um, of the citizenry. I think um, in um, one citation in the case, they say the uh, primary purpose of a city is to protect the health of its citizenry. Um, the issue becomes, um, one, can a general law, can a regulation passed under a general law, or can an action of a board of health taken pursuant to um, a state statute um, supersede the authority of the United States of America? And the answer is no. Um, the, um, Supreme, um, the Supremacy Clause establishes the primacy of the federal government. In the case of Arthur D. Little, um, well, just very quickly on the facts, Arthur D. Little was doing research with chemical warfare agents, including sar sarin, within the city limits of Cambridge. Um, and the board of, um, the, the commissioner said, um, you do not have an approved uh, location for that trade or employment. And Arthur D. Little appealed. Um, and the Supreme Judicial Court upheld the order of the commissioner of health and hospitals, um, saying that there was nothing in that um, order that superseded any federal law. Specifically, um, they argued the War Clause, the War Powers Act, I mean the War Powers, and uh, the Contract Clause of the Constitution. Um, but the Supreme Judicial Court said they do not um, apply specifically to preempt this law. I think some people were surprised at the time because Arthur D. Little had built a very large facility and put a great deal of money into it. But I think the Supreme Judicial Court's point, uh, excuse me, court's point was that um, K 
Cambridge, a densely populated city, is really just not the place to be doing research on war aid, uh, chemical warfare agents, um, uh, especially given the risk of accident. So that's a long-winded answer, but I wanted to let you know because I know there's been a great deal of discussion about the Arthur D. Little case and the uh, language within it. But I think this is a different case because um, there is a federal statute, two federal statutes right on point, and there is a federally issued permit, the RICRA permit, that would conflict directly with any bylaw that the town would try to adopt um, through the Board of Health. Yeah, sure. Uh, please identify yourself and... Judith Knight, uh, uh, Stockbridge Road and Lee. Um, Attorney Myron, uh, my reading of the, st of the, the case law... Is I'm right sorry, on, you got to right get closer. Right. My reading of the case law that you just uh, cited is, is different, actually. Um, it seems... What basically what it, the presumption pres, preemption is pre presumed to be the, to be to not happen essentially if the board of health were to say the, let me just give an example it'd be easier to make my point that way if I'm the, sorry I'm still having trouble hearing you if the board of health in Lee were to make a determination that a PCB dump in Lee would cause grave harm to the citizens of Lee then it would be at a minimum the EPA's burden to overcome that by saying, no, it wouldn't. So they'd have to come in with their experts on the health issue. And they can't just come in, as I understand it, they can't just come in and say, we're the federal law, we're going to set decide what happens here, which is a little bit what I thought I heard you say. And that I don't believe is the law. The law is that it's, um, it's not in favor of preemption of state over town or federal over state or over town. It, it's that's disfavored. The burden would be on the EPA to prove that there wouldn't be a health risk to the citizens of Lee if a PC bump, PCB dump was put here. And I don't think they could ever make that burden. So it, uh, I would hate to start, I would hate the starting point to be, we can't even do this, let's not even try. Because the language in, our, in Arthur D. Little case is favors the little guy favors the people trying to keep the pollutants out of the town of Cambridge, and it would also favor the people here in Lee. Well, thank you. Um, maybe you could make it clear to me in terms of what would you like to see the Board of Health do? I mean, you don't want an adjudication. You want an issuance of a promul I mean, excuse me, promulgation of a rule or regulation that prohibits PCB landfills. And supporting that, you would need a hearing beforehand where there would be testimony Correct. that the PCB landfill is bad for the health and safety of the citizens of Lee. Correct, yes. Yes. What do you think of that idea? Well, the, um, the shortest answer to that is EPA um, is required to consider what are called applicable or relevant and appropriate requirements. The acronym is ARARS, sorry. Um, and if an ARAR cannot be met, EPA has the authority to waive it. So if the Board of Health were to pass a regulation, one, EPA at this point could ignore it. Um, and two, if they didn't ignore it and put it forward um, as an ARAR, they would waive it under these circumstances because functionally they already have um, with respect to state requirements. But they have never really taken testimony as to the health condition, the health concerns of, of a PCB dump in the town of Lee. B the EPA ha doesn't seem to have taken any public testimony and if the Board of Health were to conduct such a hearing, the EPA could, could show up and they could, they could try to counter it at that level. Rather than just waving it off, I would think that that would create uh, an issue for litigation. Well, let me ask, ask another question then. Assume the Board of Health issued um, such a bylaw after a hearing. Um, how would it go about enforcing it? It, it would be, as far as, far as uh, my position would be that that would be the law of the land, and, let, and then if the EPA tried to come in and say, no, we're going to put this now, even in the face of all this evidence that, EP, that PCBs uh, are, are carcinogenic, toxic, 
uh, damaging to the to the residents of Lee. We're still going to push forward with this town this uh, town dump. I, we would have a lawsuit on our hands. But I hope at that point at least the select board would agree that we shouldn't have the PCB dump and we could start taking uh, finding one airway out of this agreement. Yeah, I, I certainly don't want to be argumentative. The um, but my question was um, how would the health board go about enforcing the regulation. I mean, would it issue a citation Would it, and then go to court? I imagine so, yes. Okay, and EPA's defense in court would be, we've already determined that this is th the safest and uh, least destructive to the environment as compared to, say, I th would submit their re reasoning as having PCBs in Woods Pond and up and down the river is a more dangerous and unhealthy and greater risk to the environment than having um, a PCB landfill within the border of Lee. That doesn't mean anyone needs to agree with that analysis. It's just that is the analysis EPA has made and um, um, has the benefit of the supremacy clause of saying we're operating strictly under laws that Congress has passed, and there is an, these are express, uh, this is express preemption. It's not sort of field preemption where it's questionable whether there was um, uh, preemption or not. It is um, a matter of Congress has given EPA the authority to waive um, applicable or appropriate and relevant um, they have standards. To make Excuse me. No, that's fine. I would, th I would think that the EPA would have to make some findings, at least within their own statutory framework, to say this is why we're waiving this. And um, really what I'm trying to do is open up find out from your perspective, since you have been hired from the town of Lee, do you, so you do have uh, no faith that, that the Board of Health can do anything in this circumstance without even hearing any testimony or anything? I think... Um, uh, I've expressed the view, certainly the Board of Health can hold a hearing, they can take testimony, and they could, in fact, um, put in place a bylaw. I'm just saying that it wouldn't be enforceable. J Judith, uh, I, th yes, I thank you, but yeah, I, I, I'd like to open it up to, uh, you have a couple other hands here. Gail, do you wanna? Yeah. Again, please, please identify yourself and your address, please. Hi, I'm Gail Ceresia, 161 West Park Street, Lee. Um, I think there's some confusion here um, because this hearing that we would like to have, the way I understand it, I could be incorrect, is a, um, what, what do you call it, a judicatory hearing? Yeah. Is that what you call it? Okay, and so we don't have a bylaw and we don't want a bylaw. We don't care about a bylaw. What we have is a Board of Health that, the way I can understand it from what Bob said, Brown, um, Bob Jones said, I always want to say Bob Brown, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, what Bob Jones said was that it's, um, the Board of Health is like an arm to the state. And there are these laws, this law on the, on the books that says that the health of the public comes before any environmental situation uh, impact. And that takes precedence over any other law. And that isn't, I'm not sure of the year, is it 1860, 1880, I don't know the year around that time, uh, takes precedence over the uh, RECRA law that came in in 1980. So we're not talking about a bylaw here. We're talking about the Board of Health having a hearing where both sides can come and state their case because quite honestly, we haven't had a chance to do that. We haven't had a MEPA review or a NEPA review. Things that should most projects have to go through might not have any rules or anything, but at least it informs the public of what's going on and the public can come and talk about it. Um, so we haven't really had those kinds of review the way I understand it. We've had some, some meetings or whatever, but our town never really had that. And so what the Board of Health, 
is, is just totally different than, um, say, the planning board or the town laws. It's, it's a totally different um, animal, so to speak. And uh, it has a different set of regulations. And I think that confusing this with the bylaw is different. We don't want a bylaw. We don't care about that. We, we know that we can't change the zoning already. We tried that. Um, but we can't. But what came up was this 18, can you inform me of the date, Tim? Uh, oh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so Are anyway, you talking about the 1828 case? The, uh, not the 28 case, what's it? I what's think it was 1828. What's, what's the year of our 18, it's 1860 or something like that. Anyway, uh, what year is the, that uh, public health, the piggery law, 18 what, 60? Yeah, 1850s, I, you know, it's somewhere. 1850s, okay. All right, a, a little while ago. And anyway, a long time before the RECRA came in. And um, the other thing is, is I'm not really so sure what authority EPA has because the Supreme Court really put a dent into them and into something that they were trying to do with another um, corporation. And so things are kind of up in the air governmentally wise, but. What I'm really trying to say is we don't need a bylaw, and I think that there's confusion there that you're, you're considering a bylaw. We're not, that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to have an adjudicatory hearing where both sides can come, and I think that, uh, you know, quite honestly, the townspeople have asked for it. If we have to get 100 signatures or whatever it is to get the select board to do this, then we'll do that. But... Uh, I don't think that you or anyone else has the right to deny us that adjudicatory hearing, and it's not regarding a bylaw. Thank you very much. And if you have anything uh, to comment, I'm uh, sure. I, I would just respond just by saying, Gil, I think it's my, I don't think it's our role as the select board to, to instruct the health board what they should or shouldn't do. It's up to the health board to hold this this uh, adjudicatory hearing, if that's what they deem they're they're going to do, I just, um, and I and I would uh, I would welcome any other comments. If can I just respond to that? Sure. Please? I'm just trying to um, take away the confusion between a bylaw and this hearing and what this hearing has. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the confusion between the bylaw and? Whether we wanted to, the, someone to create a bylaw. Uh, I'm trying to take that away from the adjudicatory hearing, which is a different situation legally. I, you know, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, so, uh, but I do know that much. I mean, I do understand law some. I'm a, a wetland consultant, so I have to read some laws. and. Um, you know, I just, I just really want to separate those two issues because I think it's going to confuse the public. Thank you. Do, we, do, you, do you have a, do you want to respond to that? I don't. Um, no, I think I, I'm a bit confused, but I think it may become clearer in our, in our discussion this evening. Um, if, we, if we have questions specifically about the Board of Health issue, Please, Tim, if you want to. I'd like to straighten out what's, yes. Yeah, just your name and. Oh, Paul. Timothy Gray, 165 Bradley Street, Lee, Massachusetts, um, near the dump. <laughs> Um, yeah. You know, I, I, we need to talk about this here because what, what he says, Chris says, is totally opposite from what Cristobal Boniface says, okay? Who is the guy that's helping us work, the, work this Board of Health situation. Now, Cristobal is a world-renowned lawyer, okay? He's no lightweight. Tim, Tim, Tim. Okay. Address your he's, comments he's to us, one please. Of, he's one yeah. of the best in the world. He took on Texaco Chevron to fight for the poisoning of the Amazon jungle, and he won. This guy has cases for years and years, and he's known as one of the world's greatest environmental lawyers. These guys here, they don't know what they're talking about. 
All right, Tim. Now, Chris, Tim, well, Tim, okay. I'll just well, I'm you. just saying. I'm, well, I'm, I'm, I don't like decorum, what I'm hearing. Decorum no, it must be observed. Don't don't point in in. Well, question, then you need question th- then, the. Hang then on, then hang I'll on. say it Tim, this way. Tim, then. please, Tim, please. I'll, I'm running the meeting. I'm just I'm giving you some rope here. Just please don't question okay. our our council's credentials, please. Okay. If okay. Well, please, the only- if, if you could make this about our uh, a legal question. Uh, how we move forward? That's that's what it, that's well, what we're Well, I have here a for. two other okay. questions, but I'm very upset that what we're trying to do with the Board of Health and what you people are telling us about it is wrong, and that that's why I'm up here to say this. But you obviously don't want to even hear this. I guess you know it's 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 pretty. Um, you know, the bottom line is is, and and you you guys also know that Cristobal Bonifaz. Listen to this one. Cristobal Boniface, this world-renowned Tim, Tim, lawyer. Tim, again, please address he, your he, comments. He up has here, said, I, what, what, what's this law that you can't look at the public? You know? Give me a break. Where'd that come from? I don't, I've never seen that one on the books. I really haven't. Tim, but. Tim the purpose of this meeting is yes. to ask, okay. pu- is to ask so, legal so questions. Go back to and, what I just said then. Talk about uh, What I options. just said is the way that you are per- moving this meeting along is you are miss representing what Cristobal Boniface is trying to do with the Board of Health, and it's a disservice to everybody in this room that you're doing that, okay? Because, you know, the bottom line is, is you have a lawyer, and I'll finish with this too, is Cristobal Boniface has offered that if we go to this Board of Health hearing and we do this, and if any ramifications come to the town, he will represent both the Board of Health and the town of Lee, pro bono for whatever is needed to fight off the, the people that will be coming after us, maybe, because we don't want this dump in our town. And I think you, ought, you, you owe it to us to make sure that people understand what's really going on with the Board of Health meeting. And this guy's misinformed. That's all I can tell you. Uh, Mr. Gray, um, I just would agree there's no question about Mr. Boniface's um, credentials. His, uh, handled extraordinary cases, um, including um, doing a fantastic job in the Chevron case in Nicaragua. There's no question about that. I have with me his um, letter to the Board of Health, and um, it obviously parallels your letter, excuse me, it parallels your letter um, and uses the, essentially the same citations. And he spells out what he sees as the options um, that would happen um, if the Board of Health acts. If it doesn't act, that's the end of it. If it holds a hearing and finds that there is no um, harm to uh, uh, health or the environment, that would be the end of it. If it finds the other way, I think says he says that um, GE can try to file a worthless lawsuit against the Board of Health in the town of Lee. Um, I'm not sure exactly why he says a worthless lawsuit or whether he meant a frivolous lawsuit. Um, But what uh, is not addressed is very simply the the federal law, um, the Comprehensive uh, Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act, known as CERCLA or the Superfund Law, says that no federal, state, or local permit shall be required for the portion of any, reme- any removal or remedial action conducted entirely on site where such remedial action is selected and carried out in compliance with this section. And it's been interpreted to mean on site or in proximity to the site. And here, um, the law is that EPA does not need any permits. They're not going for a siting assignment from under state law. They're not going for a, a hazardous waste siting assignment. They're doing nothing in terms of what you would have to do to get the kind of permitting that's required for um, uh, a facility of any kind of landfill facility, much less a PCB disposal facility. And the reason is they don't have to because federal law says they don't have to. So that's where Mr. Boniface and I uh, separate. Go ahead, Ann. Ann Langless, I live on Union Street. So um, 
Attorney Chris, yeah. back to what you had given for an answer. You made reference to this Cambridge case, yep. and they won. Yep. Your next breath was, but you don't think we're going to in this particular case. I don't, I'm, but, I'm sorry, could you say that again? But your next breath was, you don't think that we would in this particular case through our Board of Health. I, I think I'm following you, but go okay. ahead. The question before, you referred to our case in our town as unique. And then I asked you if you have taken to trial with the experience of anything like our situation, and you again said, no, it's unique. So what I don't understand is, how can you give such a definitive answer of we're gonna lose with going through our Board of Health when you yourself have not had the experience in this type of unique case. And for me, it just makes me feel like from right out of the gate, you're telling us no. But yet you don't have the experience to back it up other than the reference you made to Cambridge, who did win. So it's very confusing. Well, I've been handling federal Superfund cases since uh, 1983, so, um, we Whether, are not a Superfund case, though. Pardon me? This is not a Superfund site. Yeah, that's, if you look at the first, um, the introduction of the, uh, to the permit, it says, um, it's a RICRA permit, but it says it's to be implemented pursuant to CERCLA. And that's what the consent decree says also from back in uh, 2000. So it just makes a reference to, but we are not labeled as a Superfund site. Well, if we were a Superfund site, would they not be forced to take it all out? No, I think if I'm following your question, GE fought vigorously, if not furiously, to keep the, this site off of the national priorities list. I do not know all their reasons for doing that, but I think a principal one was they did not want to have to be funding every action that EPA took. They wanted to be able to contest specific EPA actions without um, EPA drawing money from the fund and then GE being immediately responsible for it. Um, the, uh, there is no question though that this project is being done pursuant to CERCLA under a RICRA permit. It's on the face of the permit and it's in the consent decree. And reference to but not labeled as. I'm not sure what you mean by that. The um, permit, um, I don't have it right in front of me. That we're not labeled as a Superfund site. Oh, no, it's not labeled as a Superfund site. Right. But it's being managed under, the comp under CERCLA. Okay. And the other part of my question was, in reference to your saying that you don't think that we could win through going through the Board of Health, have you had another case yourself personally that has not won that you had experience in a situation like ours, being ours is so unique? No. Okay. As I said, I see this as a unique situation. Being we're such a unique situation, I would like to see you have more of an open mind that we do have the ability to go through our Board of Health. We could be one of the first towns on the books that could win this case. Yes. Yes. And as someone who's sitting here answering questions for us, we need you to be open-minded that it could happen for this town of Lee. We could win with that case. You do not know for sure, because you cannot see into the future, whether or not we're gonna win with going through the Board of Health. I've never Thank claimed you. to be able to see into the future. Um, what I have provided to you, um, in accordance with what the Select Board asked me to do, is my best interpretation of the applicable law to these circumstances. I think um, what you're talking about with the Board of Health parallels or tags along with what Mr. Pollard was saying with respect to um, the Planning Board or using zoning to try and prevent this. It is simply a matter that the Environmental Protection Agency does not have to pay any attention to it under the law. Monica Ryan, Laurel Street. Janice is next. 
Happy birthday. So, um, as far as I'm concerned, I think we, I think a, an open mind, <clears throat> an open mind has to be kept. And I don't think that any decision, uh, I, I feel like I'm getting the vibe from you that you're not up for it. But I feel that I'm getting the vibe from everybody else that we're up for the challenge. We're up, we want to go head to head. As far as we're concerned, we haven't been able to do that. We're all very upset because we have not been able to tackle this ourselves and have our voice heard by GE, literally by GE. They've, we've had a few different forums, but you know, have they, they're not been, and the EPA has been here and pretty much as a, just a, a lackey for, for a better word, for, for GE, right? So as far as we're concerned, we feel that an adjudicatory hearing by the Board of Health should be held. When we had that Board of Health meeting recently, the select board members were in attendance in the audience, and they had the two of them had recommended right off the bat. At the end of the meeting, the attorney, Pollard, recommended that they not go forward until he spoke with his board. Now I'm hearing tonight from Sean that they have nothing to do with what the Board of Health says. So as far as I'm concerned, they were almost ready to call for that adjudicatory hearing. As far I, I believe that night until. Attorney Pollard recommended that they hold off until he consulted with the three select board members. So I'm just bringing this up as a fact. It's, it was in the meeting. And I just feel that we need to go forward. It allows us to say our part. It allows GE to say their part. And then the health, Board of Health can make a determination on whether the carcinogen, cause, you know, car, cancer-causing PCBs would be safe in a, another, as far as I'm concerned, mini super fund. It'll just become another super fund when that leaks anyway. So I mean, it just be, you know, it drives me crazy that they can think that they can plant that here safely. It's not possible. They haven't even come up with a liner for it. So we've got to go down fighting. And I don't believe that we should be ruling this out altogether. I think that if we challenge them, and if they hear what we have to say, and everyone hears what we have to say, they may back down. No. You won't have to worry about enforcing it. Hmm. After saving $244 million, I'm not seeing them back in that. Janice, if you, if you want to keep it about the Board of Health, please. Yeah. Yes, I have a question too, but as um, far as the Board of Health goes, we have a, a pro, this is, I don't know why everybody's afraid of General Electric, why they're afraid of the EPA. I'm certainly not afraid of any of them. We have this one chance for the Board of Health to step up and do it. We have a, an attorney that's going to do it pro bono. It's crazy if we don't move forward with this. I just don't understand. We got to fight this. It's our one chance to fight this because you could, if it, this dump goes in, you, you're gonna, all going to be sorry. I'm, 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 I see the future every night in my sleep. What's going to happen to people? And uh, I think we just need to move forward. Can I ask another question? Does it have to be with the Board of Health? Yeah, I'd like to keep it, if, if, I, if we could keep it to the Board of Health okay. issue for now, and we'll come back to your other questions. Okay, sounds good, but we need to fight this. That's all I'm okay. going to say. Don't be afraid of the big guns. We can win this. Believe me, I know we can win this. Sure. Um, uh, Gordon Bailey. Um, I, I think one thing that uh, I, I didn't really... I didn't get the um, impression that uh, a, the attorney was saying don't go forward necessarily. I think what I heard was he didn't think it was winnable, but I, as a Board of Selectmen member, as an individual in town, I think it would be absolutely fine if the Board of Health wants to go forward with their hearings and do all that. So I don't think he's saying that the Board should not support it or that he doesn't support the action of a Board of Health having a hearing. Um, so that was my impression. It's just he doesn't think it's winnable in the long run, but if, we, if the Board of Health chooses to go that route and to do it, um, I, I don't think that that's a problem. I think that's you know uh, us trying to take care of ourselves. That's all. So I, I, I don't want to get too held up on the fact that you think he's saying don't do it. I think he's just saying he doesn't think it would win in the long run. That, that's kind of more my impression of, of the comments that were made. Uh, that's all. Yeah, the, the, the Board of Health did not retain me. The Select Board did. Um, and uh, to that end, um, whether or not the uh, Health Board wants to go forward, 
um, in the manner suggested by, I think, Mr. Gray and Mr. Bonifaz, um, that is for the Board of Health to decide. I yeah. am. And one, Chris, Chris, did you want to? No, I'm good. Yeah, and I just wanted to clarify, Monica. I wasn't saying not that the Board of Health. I, 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 it's improper for the select board. Their Board of Health is their own entity. It's improper for us to instruct them whether they should or shouldn't. The, the board, we could individually think, have our own opinions, but it's our board anyway. Josh? My question is for the select board uh, related to this question. Why does the select board continue to employ attorneys that don't seem to have a strategy to winning uh, the fight against the dump? We have two panelists right here that do not seem to present a legal strategy for success. So why has the the town select board employed lawyers that haven't put forward a strategy for success? I'm, I'm happy to answer that. Okay. We didn't hire an attorney to fight the dumb. We hired an attorney to come here this evening He's an environmental law attorney to, to give his legal opinion. When we met with him, he didn't give us any answers. He simply, we gave him all the questions that we thought we would have or that might come up. And we asked for his opinion. So we have two opinions at the end of the table from two different attorneys. We have Tim Gray and Cristobal Bonifaz. I'm big fans of both. And I'm listening to what they have to say. This is an informational hearing. You can ask any questions you want, and you're going to get different answers from different people. Quite frankly, I'm with Tim and Cristobal, but we're going to be respectful of each other, and rather than being accusatory and challenging, let's get the answers. Because in the end, my opinion doesn't matter. You know what matters? Your opinion. And if you hear from, from Chris that he doesn't think this is winnable, or you hear from Jeremiah, this, that, and the other thing, you'll hear from Cristobal and Tim, in the end, I need to hear from you what you want to do. But let's get the questions answered and, and so we can, know, we can know, so I can know how to move forward with this. That's all it is. Jordan, do you have anything you want to add? No, that was well put. If there's anything further on the Board of Health, you want to come, come on down. Oh, are you... Please identify yourself for everyone. Sure. My name is Leslie Gabriel, and I host a podcast called And So It Flows. It's a, it's a radio show for water. Um, I live in Beckett, which would be close enough to the dump. Two things. Uh, as far as for the Board of Health, is there something in their bylaws that they have to you know, somehow follow the Bill of Rights, which promises the pursuit of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And if there are known, known impacts of PCBs, I think there have been multiple decades where it shows how it's bioaccumulative, that it doesn't just stay in the dump or any dump that has PCBs or any location that has PCBs. It shows up in polar bears. So question number one, do they have to answer to a higher authority of the Bill of Rights, which promises life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? Because if you're sick and you have disease that are known caused by PCBs, does that not impact life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? Especially like medical bills, impacts on people's uh, economics when it comes to their property values. The pall that it puts on a location for having it cited there. So that's number one. And number two, as a select board, do you actually answer to that Bill of Rights as well. Do you have an oath to uphold not just the Constitution, but the Bill of Rights, which promises life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? Two questions. 
yeah, I, I can't speak to the the Board of Health in, in there, but I mean, we, we definitely, we, we would all strive for the pursuit of life, liberty, and, the, and happiness. Um, so if it's, it's, it's a very, this is, yeah. this is kind of getting to the crux of the issue here, because this is a very, I mean, we're, we're living next to an open air landfill right now, and it's affecting all of our health right now. Yeah. yeah. And they're going to dig it up, and they're going to, you know, it's going to go airborne, it's going to affect our health, and then there's going to be a construction of a, of a landfill. What's the... What's the best outcome that we can hope for is, is part of why we're here. So that's, that's what we're trying to sort of understand all, yeah. you know, I would, I would hand it off, Bob, Gordon, if you want to add anything to that. I mean, okay. it's, it's a very, I understand, and that's what we're all here for, but you have to understand this, you know, the, the, the state of the river and the way that it is now. And I know that nobody in here would probably agree with this and I don't necessarily agree with this but is there is there a net benefit to removing the PCBs out of the river and constructing this landfill is that better for the health of people I don't have that answer yeah but that's what the permit is calling for right now okay so. and one last thing has there been an exhaustive I mean exhaustive search for other ways of doing cleanup which have been shown in things as far off as hemp, which is big now in, in the state, uh, to, to actually find ways of removing it? Or is this, has they really done an exhaustive search? I've been way, I, I had a chance to see Apollo 8 go up and I was right at the front row. My dad worked in Cocoa Beach at the time. There were more than a couple of tools to put that rocket sure, yeah. in outer space. I, I can't say that I know that there's been an exhaustive search, but as part of this permit, the EPA is committing research and development of technologies and testing the, these different things. And that's where I would welcome everybody to here to be a yeah. part of that process. My guess is and, it exists. And bring some of this these technologies. I know Tim has a lot of information that he can illuminate us all with so i'm as part of the process i'm hoping for that yeah thank you do you want to do you want to say something chris do you want to say something i can wait yeah you sure go ahead with tim. tim go ahead tim come on up and then we'll we'll go to claire and then maybe we can move on Thirty years ago, there was a power plant that was going to come into the town of Lee, up near my house, and I started studying it. You know, they picked the wrong guy to try to build it next to, and um, found out later that this job, this power plant that was promising jobs to all the mill workers and everything, but then I found out you needed a master's degree to be able to run this plant, and all the boiler tenders you know, we're gonna lose their jobs. And so anyway, um, this is where I met Cristobal Bonifaz. And Cristobal Bonifaz came into the town of Lee and started helping us. And lo and behold, what did we decide to do? It is a board of health hearing, okay? Now we were told we were crazy, that we don't have the authority to do this, that the authority is way above your heads, and you will not be successful. But Cristobal said, well, guess what? I have been successful with this law before, and I will be again. And so he took it on here in the town of Lee. And if anybody remembers this from 30 years ago, what ended up happening is that the Board of Health reviewed this plant, decided it was bad for the health of the people of Lee, and eight weeks later, it was done. And this had the approval of the Massachusetts Siting Council of for power plants. It had, it, you know, it was pretty much a done deal, as they say, but then guess what? It never happened because of this law. And about four years ago now, I, um, you know, four or five years ago now, Cristobal had another um, case that he took on, and it was for the Deerfield 
Board of Health, Deerfield, Massachusetts. You might remember a pipeline that was going to be built from uh, New York State through uh, Cummington, go over next to Cristobal's house. They picked the wrong place to put the pipeline to. And um, go through the town of Deerfield over there. And they decided to have one of these Board of Health meetings too with Cristobal. And they went ahead and they did this. Now this is a pipeline that had approvals. In fact, they were already building it, okay? And um, the Board of Health of Deerfield took the um, information and they said, this is bad for the health of the citizens of Deerfield. And guess what was never built? The pipeline. Didn't happen. This is a multi-billion dollar project that the Board of Health in little old Deerfield stopped with this law. And I brought this with Cristobal again to the town because we're fighting for our lives. And you know, frankly, I've been looking for every stone to turn over and find out if there's something there that could help us. And I just wanted to let you guys know that um, Cristobal has a track record, not only with other sites also, but with our town already. And um, the, the most recent one I could come up with was the Kinder Morgan pipeline, of which never got built. So yes, the EPA, they might come in and they might try to scare us. They probably will do what they always do. I've been fighting EPA for 30 years, that's what they do. They've been trying to scare me for 30 years, but they don't scare me. Because you wanna know something? There's, there's something called the Clean Water Act of the United States, and I stand behind that. That's what my whole Waterkeeper organization is about. And I'm telling you right now that this Board of Health thing has the possibility. It, do I know it will stop it? I don't know, we don't know. But one thing I do know is there's track records to say. We've tried it here in the town of Lee. We had success. And, um, and I'm here to say, I think we ought to be trying this again. It just makes all the sense. And, and I'll say it once again too, is that if anything comes of this in the bad direction, is Cristobal Boniface has offered to represent the town and or the Board of Health for free. And if you want a lawyer who's pretty damn competent, I mean, the, the, the town of Lee will probably never have a lawyer of this stature offer to work pro bono for it again. So we ought to think twice about, um, you know, making this Board of Health thing go away. Thank you, Tim. Um, Claire, I was gonna, I was gonna recognize Claire. If you, if you, if you have something about the Board of Health. Claire Leahy, Claire Leahy, um, one ten Mill Street, Lee. Um, I want to get back to the consent decree, and I want to ask the the attorney that we have here as a guest uh, question. You mentioned that. Um, EPA, GE was, allowed, they're allowed to do anything that they want on site. That was, and I, I, this has kind of hit me as I read the consent decree. Um, the, the fact that the dump wasn't part of the site. GE bought that after the original consent decree. The Board of Health had no chance to ever weigh in on this location. Remember, the original EPA order, the original consent decree, was to have the, all the waste shipped out of state to a certified, they didn't say Superfund site, but I can get back to the Superfund site, and that was all political. The mayor and even John Ted Kennedy came to Pittsfield to make sure that that was not called a Superfund site because of what it would have done to the image of Pittsfield. So here we are now, stuck with something a little bit less, but I, I do feel it's very important for our attorneys to look at the fact that the GE site was bought from a local company after 
the final decision was made about putting the dump in Lee. They had an option to buy that site from Lane Construction. And then when the decision was made that it would be in Lee, you can look back at the timing on this. When that was made, GE decided to turn in their, their make, um, no, Eurovia said they had to cash in on their um, option to buy right away or they were going to lose it. I, I just think the timing of that and the fact that, that it was such a surprise to everybody in town, nobody ever had any chance to weigh in, no Board of Health, no DPW, all these specs were Claire, spelled out to us. Claire, I just want to I just want to ask you if there's a, is there a question and, and again we're not talking about how I'm we got here. I'm asking him. But yeah, I'd I'm, like to I'm asking if that might be something that we need to research a little further the fact that the Board of Health really never got to weigh in on this. And the timing of the the fact that the site was that was not a part of the original site. When they said that they could do anything they wanted on site, the site was the river, the whole corridor. It did not include 75 acres of Lee land zoned conservation residential that they bought after it was decided to be put in Lee. And in, well, and that's the environmental part, but I'm trying to just focus on the chance that the Board of Health had to ever weigh in on this. Do yeah, you understand I, my question? I, I think I, your, 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 is your it question, question is about the Upland facility, the location not having been part of the site, and, and, the, and the, inten yes. the intention and, of the, the circle of laws is that they have technically the circle free laws say on, they on can the do anything that they right. want on site. I, I is, don't have an answer. That's a good no, question. No, I know you don't, don't have, have the answer. answer. That's why I'm asking for the attorneys to read that consent decree very closely again and see and look at the timing of putting this dump in. If I understand, your specific question is um, that uh, I don't know if EP, if GE had an option. Is I think that's what you said. Um, yeah. GE has exercised that option, right? As far as you know. Yeah, they did. Okay. As, soon, as soon as they heard that the dump would be in Lee and as the site that they had an option on was near a part of, it, it, it was very, very strange way it all came about. Um, all of a sudden, I was with Timmy, we heard that the dump was going to be in Lennoxdale, and we thought it was going to be at Lane Constructions. The next day we found out that one of our selectmen and a selectman from Lennox had been walking along the road next to the Lane Construction and looked up at the property and said, this is a disturbed area, this would be perfect, and it was agreed upon between them that this would be the site. Yeah, Claire, I, I can't speak to that. And again, this isn't about you know how we got here or what was said, who picked the site. It, it's really- It's I, not about that, and that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that that site was then, we, we never, it never was specifically laid out where that was going to be. And therefore, as a town, we just were blindsided uh, with this and no chance for any in input. Agreed. Thank you. And yeah. I, I'm just wondering if, if any, the attorney has any questions. Do you, do you have a comment or anything? Uh, no, I, I don't think I do, <laughs> except to the extent you were saying that it took place without the Board of Health or anyone else commenting. I mean, I think that's um, sort of the crucible within which all the discussion of this is happening. Um, 
I, I think there's uh, great distress, anger about um, a decision being made in executive session that had such significant impact on the town. Um, I think uh, Sean has said that uh, you know we're not here to discuss discuss history, and you know my understanding is that um, the attorney general, I mean, Mr. Pollard offered and gave his opinion, the attorney general has given their opinion, and a superior court judge has uh, ruled that the uh, vote of the select board was valid. So I have not approached that subject no, at all in my okay. research or what I was asked to do by so the So you're board. just here to d help us decide whether or not the Board of Health can make a I understand that, but I, I just, you had referred to the fact that EPA or GE was allowed to do anything that they wanted on site. And what I'm trying to point out is this is not part of the site. Thank you. If, if it sounded, I don't want to have my remarks construed as saying EPA can do anything they want. They are um, constrained by multiple statutory requirements. Um, but at the end of the day, they can waive um, requirements. Um, they have to have a basis for doing it. Um, and that's all part of the record in this case. It's a specifically an exhibit to the permit itself, the ARRS analysis. Okay, thank you. Thank you. S S Steve, I, I kind of pointed at you next and then we'll get, we'll get to Steve Endell, 35 Church Street. Um, specifically to the Board of Health, uh, Chris, right, you yep. mentioned that, you know, they could have a judiciary hearing and then issue a bylaw. I mean, I guess I don't understand the legal process. What I wanted to hear is what is the high level process, how the Board of Health would rescind this contract? I mean, maybe without, is, is the bylaw the only way or are there other ways? I, I don't think, um, my daughter always like using the word conflate, I'm not going to. Um, the issue of um, with rescinding the settlement agreement and what the Board of Health does, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I see those as, as separate issues. I, I'm not sure I'm following your question. You no, know, what I'm saying is everybody says we should use the Board of Health. I was at that meeting. How would it go forward if, if, if the Board of Health agreed, okay, let's try this. We have Cristobal willing to defend us. What's the steps? What happens next? We're, you know, that's what I thought I would see tonight, and don't think it's the wrong way. I thought we were coming yeah. here tonight, and we were going to hear that the legal minds were getting together with the select board. You're going to hire this expert. You know, to forgive me, but that's what I thought. That we're going to hear some strategy to stop the dump or rescind the contract or stop the dump from happening in this town. And beyond the, the you know, I don't want to go outside the Board of Health, but if it's not the Board of Health, please tell us the strategy not including the Board of Health. Some strategy to move forward. That's what I thought. Like, Bob, you mentioned before, you want us to make the decision. On what? What I mean by that is, to make a decision, we have to know the pros and cons. What is the negative side of doing this? You know, and I know you can't have that so quickly. Yeah, yeah. if I may. Steve, but, I, think, I think we're getting there, and if Bob, you okay. want to respond. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't mean uh, to. <laughs> I, guess, I guess I just, I wasn't clear. <laughs> this is an informational hearing. This is not to plan a strategy for stopping the dump. This is an informational hearing so that we know the ramifications of whatever decision we make, not this board, we make as a town. Okay, so right. there are going to be questions that are going to come up. How much is it going to cost if we exactly. rescind the if, if we rescind the agreement? What are the odds of winning in court? What if the board of health uh, takes it on? And it's this is not about a bylaw. This is about a board of health saying a PCB dump is presents a danger to the health and safety of the citizens of this town. I agree. It's a statement. Okay, it's not about a bylaw, and they're a board of health, and they can make us wear masks. 
during COVID. They can say you can't drink the water. I hear you. They can say, okay, so it's a board of health. They may, I know they're powerful, so how, right. what so would it, they do then? If it's not a bylaw, how does it work? I'm just trying to understand it. We they, have lawyers here. They said we can't go forward with a dump because the dump, and, and it's got to be based upon facts and science and evidence yeah. that this will present, this dump as proposed, will present a danger to the citizens of the town of Lee. They have to come to that conclusion on their own. This okay. board can't do that. I understand. On their own, they have to come to that conclusion and provide evidence for their decision. I gotcha. Okay. Then they send so. a letter to G and said you can't in the EPA. And then, you can't. And then let the games that, begin. We're trying to understand the process. That's, that's all. the process. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I still don't understand it, but thank you. I want yeah. to understand the legal steps. Then you thank end up you. in court. Then we end up in court. Just a reminder, please identify yourself for us all. Hi, I'm Bob Westbizer. I'm the chairman of the Lee Board of Health. Um, Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A, a couple of, I, I want to, uh, based on my knowledge and experience and some recent research, clarify. Just with, with the mask on, Bob, just get, I mean, you can keep it on. Just get real close to the, to the mic. That's okay. Yeah. Just stay where you are. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? Is that better? Yes. That's better. Okay. As close as you can. Um, the Board of Health, I mean, many of us personally on the board and um, it are, are not in favor of having a dump in Lee. Personally, much as Bob said, we're sick over it. It's a tragedy, what's going on. But I'm on the Board of Health. So the Board of Health can look at this from what tools do we have to focus on it. One of the key things is, is there precedent and possibility that actions the Board of Health takes have a reasonable chance of success, right? We had our own meeting, many of you were at that meeting, and that was one of the things that came up as our decisions as our kind of like direction. The adjudicatory hearing may help with that. Evidence can be presented with regard to the possibility of success. Number two, is the dump unsafe? Does it present a significant health hazard to the people of Lee? We haven't talked about that tonight. We don't know about that. We're interested in having a meeting with the right support. We need expert opinion. We need knowledge of case law. We need engineering assessments. And we need to see the plan that GE and the EPA have come upon. And that includes tangential issues about transpor transporting this material in our town the trucks, the diesel, the et cetera, et cetera. Lots of stuff going on with that. This hearing, as proposed, was to look at those two things. And the board agreed to that, asking for, our, for the support we need, expert opinion. I'm used to not knowing what the heck to do, right? I have, in my work, all the time, I have to ask for second opinions. And that's a really important concept here, is that none of us are good at this. We hire and look for expert opinions. Now, one of those key components, right, is can we win or not? One of the things I'd, I'd like to just uh, clarify from my perspective and my knowledge are the three cases that keep coming up. I was on the Board of Health when the code generation plan was proposed. We've also been able to find the file from then. There was no Board of Health meeting. The only thing that was uh, uh, kind of like attached to the Board of Health was that our director at that time, Peter Kolodze, asked for a clarification and information regarding certain aspects of the proposed cogeneration plan. 
There was no Board of Health vote. There was no regulation or bylaw. There was no meeting of the Board of Health that discussed this. We can find no evidence of that, and we found the file. And it's thick. It has a lot of detail that was brought up with regard to the cogeneration plant and their permitting process, but it never reached us. The second case, Deerfield, right? There was a Board of Health in Deerfield that it's, it's different statute. It has more to do with energy and the um, ut uh, energy supply, but still it's federally overreaching. Uh, they did issue, I think, a regulation, or I forget exactly the noun they used, whether it was regulation or bylaw, that the pipeline can't go through their town. It was sound, I've read, the, I've read it carefully, We've talked about it at some length. It was never tested. The company went away. And it was a complex situation. It was probably, my guess, estimate, only a small part of their overall decision yeah. to reroute the pipeline in another area. It's a complex marketing, finance, et cetera, decision made potentially helpfully swayed by the Board of Health. I'd love to hear were that, were that powerful. But to characterize it as, as precedent, it, it was never tested. So it, it's important and it's a good example of an attempt, but we're looking for evidence of probable success. The third case, the Cambridge case, I, I've looked at that a little less well and I'm interested in learning more about it. But in my uh, initial knowledge that I've gained, it, it is not a federal case. It was look more regional or statewide permitting that was foiled by their activity. That's important, but we, we don't have that opportunity here. It's a different game of bowling. It's different pins, it's just different. So, I remain open. The Board of Health has agreed with principles of support, getting the support we need for that knowledge, engineering, and legal possibility to go ahead and hear both sides. Now, one problem with that hearing is we have no, to my knowledge, we have no ability to compel the interested parties to come. So we could very well have an adjudicatory hearing and GE doesn't come. And EPA has already told us they're not coming. So we might have all the people in favor again that will be much a similar sounding meeting to this, maybe with uh, the uh, attorney Bonafa Boniface. Um, but I have concerns about that. We need information and expert opinion who have at least, if not tested a precise case. There are, in my world, all the cases are different. We just, but it, I still can kind of cross over and sort of think through the foundational principles. So those three cases, I'd love it if they helped us. They don't. I feel that they don't just yet. I'm interested in hearing more about it, but the, the, this is a, a, a complex matter and we need expert opinion. We need the support of the town to be able to have that if it makes sense. And those are the key components. So, I mean, just Board of Health keeps coming up and up. We did agree with some, not conditions, but uh, requirements to go ahead with a, uh, a hearing on those two key things. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Very articulate. Uh, John Cody, Jr., 51st Street and Lee. Um, I'm kind of just trying to soak up all this information about this new angle with the, uh, with the Board of Health. Um, it seems like one of the things that we're overlooking is, I guess the ultimate decision would be 
or, or a lot based on whether it's determined whether leaving the contaminants in the river to continue to affect people that live along the river and people that use it for recreation as such would be, um, you know, more dangerous than having it in a landfill. So I guess, I mean, that's decision I think has been looked at quite thoroughly, but, um, you know, and I have my opinion on it, but I guess my underlying question is that I thought we were, this meeting was mainly about whether we're gonna stay with the rest of the river agreement or not. And what I'm trying to understand is, does this board of health angle affect that in any way? It seems like a separate, to me, almost a separate issue. The board of health and what they could possibly do or proceed with or accomplish is different than making this major decision that we're trying to get information here tonight whether we're going to stay within this agreement or we're going to rescind our participation in it. I mean, am I correct in thinking that or? Yeah, I, I'd say you're, you're correct. It's definitely separate <coughs> from the town's decision on whether or not we're going to stay. What the, the, the Board of Health, what, what, what's being talked about, again, to just kind of try to clarify this, I don't know that I will, but the Board of Health could hold a hearing where they could make a finding. To your point, what would become if they found that the dump was going to be an adverse health effects to the community? Would that mean that the PCBs stay in the river? Would that mean that GE has to truck them all out of state? I don't know. Right, but my point is what does it have to do with the decision we're trying to get to tonight as far as staying with the agreement or not. It's, yeah. It seems that's separate. It, it, it is a little separate. The wrong meeting. This, I, is, I, this, is part of, this is part of the informational thing that I think that we were trying to make this more informational. And I think that um, if, if, if unless there's anything else from the Board of Health or you guys want to, anybody else up here wants to make a comment about it, I'd, I'd like to move on to some of that. Uh, yeah. I, I appreciate the information about this Board of Health yes. angle. Like I said, I'm trying to soak up the new information. Okay, I just wanted to make one quick comment before we kind of move on to that topic. Just, just for Attorney Myram, if you could just summarize what the, we, we've talked about three cases that Bob mentioned, the Deerfield case, the Arthur Little case, and the situation with the cogeneration plant. Um, what's the significant difference uh, between those and this particular situation in Lee that might make it more or less successful than the others? So, um, I'm not familiar with the cogen with the cogen case, so I can't comment on that. Um, Kinder Morgan, um, Mr. Bonifaz um, uh, opposed um, on behalf of his clients opposed um, uh, the location of the pipeline. Um, I believe the uh, Board of Health um, did in fact adopt the bylaw and make a finding in that case. However, Kinder Morgan pulled out for economic reasons before that was tested. Um, and I think your third question was about the Arthur D. Little case. Yeah, well, why, um, what would make that one successful and not this one is successful, in your opinion? The Arthur D. Little case um, offers very significant language about the importance of uh, local control over um, health and safety matters. It also went through and did a thorough analysis of Arthur D. Little's arguments about why preemption applied, and the court rejected Arthur D. Little's arguments. Um, here, There is no question that Congress has ignited, excuse me, ignited, has enacted RICRA, the Resource Conservation Recovery Act, under which the permit is issued, and the Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act. And in that, they took over the field, that is field preemption, um, of hazardous waste site cleanup on the federal level um, 
But more than that, they expressly expressed preemption. They expressly said in the statute that EPA need not um, obtain permitting um, from the state or from local entities. So that is in sharp contrast to the facts in Arthur D. Lowe. Okay, um, we're going to get down to, I think, some more of the crux of what... You're looking for the citation? The express... That's it, that's in the in the circle is 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 what you're. I didn't say they could do whatever they want. I did say that they do not have to obtain permits that they determine are more restrictive and would not contribute contribute to um, risk to uh, human health and the environment. And the um, citation would be um, section 9621, parens E, parens 1 of CERCLA. Pardon me? Would it be easier if I gave it to you um, after, after the, uh, I can give it to you again. It's nine, it's 42, United States Code, USC, section 9621, parens E, parens 1. Do you have, do you have something brief, Monica? Because we have a lot more questions that I'm trying yes, to get to. Yes, it is still okay. about the health department, Monica Ryan. So um, when you read the circular before, you had, I think, it, if you wouldn't mind even rereading it, um, the, cir the circular where you said, you know, you read it before, the sentence about how they are not required to get any permits and such. In my mind, what we're dealing with here with the hearing is we're not asking the health department to give a permit, right? So that circular says they don't have to worry about getting permits. I'm thinking that the health department is making a statement that's not healthy, and therefore the dump shouldn't be placed here. Um, I feel that the Board of Health, uh, I heard a few times, needs the support. So we have to keep that in mind. We all need to support them in this endeavor. And I still think we should challenge it. I think that's, that's how I feel. And I feel that it's not a matter of a permit that we're trying to override. It's worth making a statement if the Board of Health does determine that it is unhealthy to have a dump here. They would say to the party that it's unhealthy to have this here, and it's not, we're not, it's not a matter of giving them a permit, and we're saying get it out of here, move it out of town. So that's a different perspective, if you will. I, I think I understand that the, um, I believe, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't remember if it was used specifically um, previously, but I, I asked the question, um, whichever course the uh, Board of Health were to take, whether it was judicatory hearing or promulgation of a regulation, the question becomes, how would they enforce it? Okay. Because nothing counts unless you can enforce it. Okay. And, well, we need to find the answer to that question. I think it's a good you, question. It's the same way that Arthur D. Okay. Little, it ends up in court. Um, okay. You go and seek an injunction, and then a judge rules. Yeah. So um, moving moving on, I'd like to uh, I'd like to get to some more of these questions. Um, so I had uh, yeah I guess just next question down here. Um, if any town withdraws from the rest of river agreement, would the existing EPA permit allowing GE to proceed creating a PCB dump be nullified? If not, what are the potential changes to the EPA permit? Um, so I guess the first part of that, if if any town withdraws from the rest of a river agreement, I don't think that 
it would alter the existing EPA permit, but I would, Chris, if you have anything specifically, I'm still on the first page here, kind of yeah. okay. halfway, a little I, more I, than halfway down yeah, on, I, on the I, questions. I, I realigned it because ah. I put answers after the, the specific question, and there are numbers that ask that question, I think, a number of ways. Yes. This one particularly asked about any town versus Lee specifically, but I think it could be Lee specifically. And this was the act, act question uh, I think Mr. Bailey addressed to me. And the fact is, the record permit has issued. There is a permit that allows GE to go forward with the work described in the permit. That permit reflects specific conditions that are included within the settlement agreement, but it operates independent of the sub, independently of the settlement agreement. Um, if um, Lee withdraws or rescinds its agreement, um, in my view, in my opinion, it does not affect the validity of the circle of permit. Um, attacking that permit the, uh, is going on now in the First Circuit Court of Appeals. If that permit is going to be affected or changed, it's going to take place in the First Circuit Court of Appeals or if it's appealed to the Supreme Court of the United States, possibly by the Supreme Court. I, I would say, and I think you would agree, that the, uh, the Supreme Court takes very few cases of all the cases that are presented to them. So. Um, I would say the prospects of this going to the Supreme Court would be slim, but um, so the hands of the fate of the permit is, lies very much in the hands of the First Circuit. If the First Circuit finds problems with it, it would remand to the Environmental Appeals Board for further proceedings consistent with the First Circuit Court of Appeals decision. Um, just, I'm not sure if others have seen it, I believe there was a newspaper account of it there had been a proposed briefing schedule that extended out into February. The court did not allow that briefing schedule um, in saying that the motion was premature. I believe the first brief is um, due October 3rd, if I remember correctly, and then the court's gonna figure out the briefing schedule after that. But it's likely to extend a while. So I, I think, you know, subsequent to, to that, the next question would obviously be, okay, if Lee was to rescind the, the agreement and try to fight, what would be the potential ramifications, repercussions that we would face as a town by sort of I think, doing that? I think the, uh, the risk is losing the benefits of the settlement agreement. Excuse I, me, excuse me. Out, hey, we've, we're not going to have out, outbursts. We'll, you, and uh, I'm, I'm, I, I, Chris, I'll just let you respond, and then if anybody has anything specifically, we want to we'll we'll field okay. it in in turn. Um, rescinding an agreement, breaching a contract, um, all contracts impose two duties, um, alternative duties. One is to perform, the other is to pay damages. In some circumstances, there's specific performance, but that's usually limited to real estate. Um, so here. Um, I don't know what position GE would take or EPA would take. I know they would take the position that the permit is valid irrespective of what happens with the uh, settlement agreement. Um, whether or not they would um, invalidate or forego those provisions of the uh, settlement agreement um, that bestow benefits upon Lee, and that would be not just financial benefits, but also participating in the process, the analysis, the uh, uh, ongoing uh, supervision and monitoring of the remedy over 13 years um, would also be potentially in jeopardy. Um, I don't think, well, my personal view would be um, EPA would avoid um, a direct conflict with uh, the town of Lee and try and find a way for Lee to get the benefits involving truck routes, um, road repairs, uh, infrastructure, and the other things that are provided for in the settlement agreement and in the permit. So yeah, if anybody has any specific questions about repercussions the town may face, 
Do you disagree? Rescinding the deal, that sort of thing. Go ahead. I do not. First of all, uh, Janice Brame, 35 Church Street. I don't think anybody knows what's going to happen. You have to do something to find out what's going to happen. And as far as $25 million goes, that's nothing if we're going to have leaks with that dump and all other health issues. But I do have a question, and maybe you can answer this for me. As the residents of Lee are referred to as stockholders in the agreement, how can the resident stockholders be forced to accept this agreement that they were never allowed to review or participate in as it was clearly a non-disclosure situation by executive sessions, leaving out over 5,000 resident stakeholders? Is that addressed to me? Yes, please. Thank you. I, I, I think I said, I know I said previously that the validity of the contract um, or of the settlement agreement um, is something that's, as, as I understand it, has been determined uh, elsewhere, and it was not uh, something which I um, reviewed or studied for purposes of this meeting. Um, as I said, my understanding is that the town council has uh, opined and the attorney general has opined and a superior court judge has ruled that the vote on the settlement agreement was valid, is valid, and um, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, I, th I think the judge's decision is on appeal, is that correct? Okay. So that has not been finally decided. Go, go ahead, G Gail and then John, go ahead. Gail Cerisi, 161 West Park Street. Like Can you move the mic to your mouth? Yeah, thank you. Is this better? <laughs> thank you. Okay. Gail Cerisi, 161 West Park Street. My question is about the contract, the consent decree. Um, we were at a meeting, a select board meeting, and it was clear that at least one of the select board members felt that the concrete, that the, con the contract would not ever invite any additional um, towns or situations where we would wind up with additional PCBs from anywhere else outside of, you know, the Berkshires. And my concern is that I'm looking at the design and they, uh, what I understand is that this dump is going to be like four stories high, which is probably almost as high as October Mountain. And uh, so I'm just like thinking, how can they possibly do that? Even drainage, it's crazy. Um, so, um, so I thought, well, maybe they plan on spreading it out or something. And I know that uh, GE is in the process of buying additional land around the site. And also, there's the possibility that, hey, maybe Eurovia wants to leave, you know? I mean, uh, they don't want to, be downgrading, you know, gradient of a PCB dump, and GE is like right there looking for more money. And so what I'm concerned about, about one of the things that I'm concerned about this whole situation is that once we say we wind up with this dump, now it's like, oh, well, the aquifer is already polluted, and, you know, who cares if it's a mile upstream from the main part of town, uh, you know, we've already polluted this area, so why not just spread it out and take the PCBs that are now in the ocean, that they have these barrels of PCBs that GE dumped in the ocean with EPA's approval, wow, uh, and um, they're going to bring those over to, to us because now we're uh, quite not a circle we're, we're not uh, well, Art Recra, we're Circla. Gail, I, and I, 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 just, I please, please, let me finish please. my actually, point. Actually, I'm running this meeting and I'm asking you to please not speculate on what may happen or what GE may I'm do. I'm asking with no, about this me, concrete, excuse me, does this, excuse this me, Gail, contract. Excuse me, excuse me. I'm, I'm asking you not to speculate on, on what GE may do or may, may intend to do when it's not, ba we don't have any evidence that that as the permit is written, they can't bring in any other 
materials. And I know that there's a lot of harsh feelings about that, and I'll let you finish and ask a question, okay. but please. In that particular area of land, does it mean that the property next door, which is a different parcel of land owned by someone else, cannot become um, a place for them to put their PCBs as well? Does not mean, I, I, that's what I'm asking. Does that contract last forever? I mean, I've seen contracts say certain things, and maybe it lasts for 20 years, 30 years, whatever, but I can totally see, you know, especially if they have to find a place for these barrels, um, I'm saying, oh, well, there's already two dumps there because that's what they're trying to say. Oh, we'll, we'll put a third one in, and oh, by the way, well, we've already polluted everything, so why not put these PCB barrels here as well on, say, Eurovia's site? Who cares where it is? It's, it's around the area. The area's already polluted. We sit here, the, the, the townspeople sit here say, hey, we don't really like this. We think it's bad for our health. And we're getting from the people that are supposed to be representing us and taking care of us, too bad. This is where it's going. We don't care if it's the most permeable soil in the world. We don't care if uh, there's an aquifer. You know, we don't care if the bedrock can possibly have sinkholes or does have fractures because all I have to do is go over and look at Lee Lime and look at the fractures in the bedrock. So the area will be polluted. Uh, we're gonna pollute more land with PCBs and uh, they'll, they'll eventually wind up in the river again, but for now, this is good. And does this contract, is this contract, I wanna ask you this, is, does this contract prohibit GE from putting additional PCBs on the adjacent parcels around the site? Does it? Can you answer that question for me, please? Um. If I'm understanding your hypothetical, I, I don't think there's anything in the settlement agreement that says GE cannot, on its own, or at some future time, get additional land and do something with it. Um, if it's not part of the RICRA permit, though, they'll have to go through all the permitting process, processes under federal and state law, and they'd never get it approved under, under uh, current law and regulations. Um, but that's... The answer to your question is, I don't believe there's anything in the settlement agreement or in the RICWA permit that prohibits GE at some time in the future from um, developing another piece of property for um, PCB disposal. I just don't think there is an express prohibition on that, if that's what your question According is. According to this contract, because what a lot of people believe is that oh yes, we're gonna have less than 50 parts per million on this site. On average. On, a, on average, okay. Um, it's supposed to be less than 50 parts per million, okay. Um, anyway, uh, a lot of people think, okay, this is it. Well, it might not be it. That's really what we're dealing with here. And if you don't think this is gonna affect the health of our community, in so many different ways. I'm not just talking physically like some people have cancer from it. I'm talking about in many ways. Financially, everything, you know? Yeah, and, and Gail, to your point, I, I, I appreciate the question and I think that, that if, if we were to stay in the agreement, that would be something that I would wanna push for to get in there. GE would, you know, waive their writer or ability to ever create another landfill and I don't know, I, we, we're all, we can only control what happens in Lee, but that, that would be something that I would ask for the EPA to hold them, hold them to, to never be able to do something like this. If we remove ourselves from the agreement, we're gonna have a hard time making some sort of, the, a lot of these. Uh, 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 oh, I'm, sorry. I, I'm sorry, but I disagree oh. with that statement. Okay. The settlement agreement does say that there will be no disposal at any other location in Berkshire County. So 
and on your set of facts, that would be another location, and the uh, settlement agreement um, prohibits it. Okay. Thank you very much. John Cody, 51st Street Lee. It's a kind of a follow-up question to the, the last question that was asked about the liability to the town of Lee. Um, and I guess I would direct this to, to Attorney Pollard. Um, just keep this simple for me, for my sake. I'll Basically, try. <laughs> would, the, would the town um, were to withdraw from this agreement, would we be legal, legally liable and subject to breach of contract action? I mean, this was a contract that we entered into, so in my mind it would be is, could you please give me a Well, uh, that? I'm going to say what I said the first time anyone asked me about this, okay? And uh, some of you were there, some of you maybe you weren't there, which is the, the process of uh, the inviting the towns to the table for the mediation and coming up with the rest of a river agreement is for the appearance of voluntariness. Me as a lawyer, I don't see it as a voluntary process. They don't need the agreement for the federal permit. So it makes it seem like the town approved the agreement. And it makes it look like the select board brought you, and you've heard it here tonight again, that the select board brought, brought a dump to Lee. They didn't. The, the, how, why do you think Lane bought that land? I've been, I've been dealing with the AG and questions about that property for over 10 years. The first tack from this town was to not, not do it as a, 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 as a group. It was that each town should approach the damages that has been done to them and decide what to do with the money. There was no way that the EPA was gonna allow for that. That was rejected. And then the, we all fought to get all of the PCBs removed from here. We won. And then it went up on appeal and we lost. So that's the stance we were in. So what happens if we back out of the agreement? Are we going to be, I'm not going to try, I'm not going to say that, I think your question is, are we going to get sued for damages, right? I, I don't see any damages. I really don't. It's just going to be the loss of the $25 million. I don't think anyone in this room cares at this point. They don't care about the money. Um, that is going to be, be allotted for the impact for us. But that is what's going to happen, is you're going to, you're going to potentially lose that, but I think what people do care about is you're going to lose uh, your 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 seat at the in the contract for subsequent monitoring for subsequent for one of the things that we just talked about is the agreements provision on on limiting what happens in the future. Well, G would love it because now they say. Okay, all bets are off. They might not even go. I mean, they may say now we can we can do what we wanted to do, which is the remember they proposed more than one of these in I, dumps I and leaks. So um, that's that's the risk. Not I don't think it's. I'm not going to try to say hey you have to do this or we're going to get sued for for damage because I don't see any. I think that all the damages have been to the town. They, that nobody could any pr to to prove any damages. Uh, I don't think GE could prove any damages, certainly. We're the ones who who have been damaged. So I don't think that's the concern. I think it's losing your place at the table. That's my biggest concern, is losing our say and having influence over what happens here okay. instead of somebody else making that decisions for us. Like I said, that's my major concern as, as a town resident. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, at this point, we're just going to take a quick 10-minute recess. So everybody, please get up, stretch your legs. We'll be back shortly. Um, I'll just start before before we get any any uh, go any further. It's 8:16 right now. I think we're going to run till right around 9 o'clock tonight, if that's agreeable with Gordon, Bob. And, and, and we would, continue. we would uh, yeah, we'll be more than happy to continue um, on another night, maybe in a week or two, or, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out maybe at the end of the meeting here. Um, just a reminder, for time, because we are going to kind of try to keep this going as best we can.
let's try to keep it brief um, and um, please refrain from any outbursts or any um, any any uh, thing that go, uh, strays from the decorum, please. And uh, with that, do we have? Uh, do we want to start? And did you have a? Qu you, you're up at the mic. Do you have All a right. question you want? Yes. So before we took a break, uh, the, we were discussing uh, the ramifications of removing ourselves from the agreement. Um, a couple of things were said. Um, one of them in particular was um, losing our seat at the table. Um, and personally, I don't feel like we ever had one. As Jeremiah Hollard so eloquently put, we never had a seat at the table. Um, it was total set up by GE. They know what they're doing. They've been doing it for decades. Um, and as far as having a say so, if uh, we are out of that contract, and this, this question is for Chris, um, if we remove ourselves from that contract and we so called lose our seat at the table, um, can, uh, can GE uh, change the contract or the agreement at that point? If we no longer are sitting at the table? Change the contract with the remaining parties to the agreement? Yes. I don't know how. Um, right. That I mean, was they my can point. try, uh, but. They're still getting what they want. Okay. Yeah. So that was my one comment with that. End question. And then, um, Sean, you had mentioned how you would. Um, you wouldn't be able to add guidelines to the current contract if we lose our seat at the table. And you made reference to being able to say you can also not be allowed to buy a piece of property adjacent and make this dump larger or to do a second one or a third or a fourth. But the contract's already made. So we don't have that ability anyway and we're never going to have that ability because the contract is made. Am I correct, Chris? I don't understand the question. Sean had a concern that we would not be able to tell GE in the future that they can't build any more PCB dumps or add to the pre-existing one. And his concern, I heard him express this, was that if we lose our seat at the table by saying, we don't want to be a part of this agreement and we're going to fight it, his concern was that we can't then tell GE that they can't make any more PCB dumps. But we can't do that now anyway. I, I didn't, well, the agreement says no other dumping in, in Berkshire County. Right. Okay. And so I, think, I don't think, I'm, I beg your pardon. Yeah, go ahead. I, I, I don't think Lee withdrawing from the settlement agreement would affect that. Okay, that was my question. And, and just, just to clarify, I think that, and I was thinking that as long as what, uh, along with other things like we've talked about r routes, right? Or tr rail about what? Routes, routes, truck routes, oh, truck routes, routes excuse me. or like usage of rail or, you know, there's a number of other things, um, infrastructure. And mm -hmm. if, if we lose the seat at the table, are we going to have any ability to have say in, in things like that, you know, reuse of, of the river, um, locations that they've disturbed. What condition do they live? Do they do they leave the river in after? I, I, and I'm I'm sort of looking for some guidance from our council as as to would we lose those sort of rights that are kind of built into the the agreement if we would if we were to deviate go outside of the agreement? I think to the extent they're recapitulated in the permit, no. DP GE has to comply with the permit. And EPA has to comply with the permit as well. So the contract would not be affected as it stands if Lee pulls out of the contract, and that's what our, if we do that collectively, okay? So my question to you is, will anything at all be allowed to be changed in the contract if we are no longer at the table? Well, there's an agreement for Lee to participate. I think this is the point Sean was making um, that comes with a place at the table under the contract. Plus, um, I, I, as I understand it, $25 million. 
So if you pull out of those things, go by the board. Right, just the $25 million is basically what we have at stake. Are there other things that we're gonna lose? You're gonna lose all the rights you have under the contract, potentially. And I think Sean was mentioning some of them. Um, I don't have a list of each one of Lee's um, rights uh, under the contract. Um, but We have neighbors that are already in the contract, though, yeah. which are Lennox, Stockbridge, Great Barrington, Great Barrington right, Houstonic. So I don't think that those other towns are going to allow GE to get away with not properly monitoring. I also don't think those other towns are gonna to allow GE to get away with changing anything within that contract. I happen to think that at this point that they have been so aware and so wakened and shaken that they're not gonna let us go under the bus a second time. So even if we pull out of that contract, what are we truly losing? $25 million, that is one year's worth of what we spend fiscally. Uh, what is our fiscal yearly spending in a year? Okay, so we got sold out for $25 million, one lousy year's worth. And once the 25 million is gone, there's no more money to be had. So that's why I think we should fight this going down, if it's gonna happen, kicking and screaming because we really don't have a say-so. We've heard from other lawyers that say, GE gets to have carte blanche. You keep repeating the fact that they have to go by the CERCLA. If all those things really are true, and we decide to go to court against them, what do we really have to lose? Nothing. The 25 million wasn't ours in the first place. It is only one year's worth of fiscal responsibility for our town. Could, I'm sorry, I'm, could you clarify, Chris? I thought you, you said that we do stand to lose more than just the 25 million. Well, the other rights you have the under, other the, rights. under the yeah. settlement agreement, yeah. which you were talking about, right. the place at the table. So I, I think you, we, 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 we can, we can, we can push for more. That's, am I, am I misunderstanding that? Is that, we've talked about this in the past. Gordon, Bob, do you guys have anything? You yeah, I'll, I'll just say that, um, what page we have? We've heard time and again the GE, uh, the, the GE and the EPA. We're at the table. As far as I'm concerned, the rest of the river is is just window dressing. It's absolute window dressing. It's a it's a polite way of uh, that they're trying to show that uh, we want to be inclusive. We want to hear from you. We want we, we we need your input. But on the other hand, we're hearing from the attorneys, and we know that ultimately they're going to do what they want to do anyway. That's what I'm getting. I, I'm, I'm speaking for myself now. I don't trust the EPA. I don't trust GE. GE had an agreement where they were going to take it all out of the out of the county, okay? And then they, they just they changed their mind. They went to court. The the agree, agreement was uh, was changed, okay? So why, what's to keep them from changing it again? They're going to do what they want to do. And I've said this time and time and time again. This is a, 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 a an offer worthy of Vito Corleone. This is they made made us an offer we can't refuse. Okay, here's 25 million dollars. Either your signatures on that paper or your brains will be. And that's what that this agreement is. Okay, so if the town of Lee, I'm speaking as a selectman, as a select board member in the town of Lee, if you all tell me if I hear from the majority of people in Lee. But we have, we've had two votes with town reps. We had the town rep overwhelmingly saying, rescind the dump. Okay, so we didn't know what the ramifications were. That's what tonight is all about, okay? And we've heard a lot between 2000 and 2022. We had a non-binding vote last uh, this year, two to one, rescind the agreement, okay? So the idea of this, this board, wanted to have this meeting, and we're gonna follow it up with another meeting, to make sure, absolutely sure, that you, we all understand the ramifications of getting out of this agreement. 
okay? But I don't trust GE, I don't trust the EPA. You know what? You say, gee, we, we don't want, uh, we don't want uh, uh, any trucks running on E Street. Well, that doesn't really work for us, but you know, is there, that's all they're gonna say because I think Chris will tell us. They have the right to do what they want to do under this. It's a, it's a vile, vile arrangement. And the idea of a seat, for me, my opinion is a seat at the table is worthless. I just wanted to mention real quick the part that you were talking about with the routes. I did pull up the agreement and did a search on the truck routes. And, and I'm just reading it, I'm not giving any opinion, but uh, it says GE shall coordinate as soon as practicable with municipal officials and affected landowners regarding the work to activities, schedules, and traffic routes. GE's coordination with officials and landowners shall be prescribed in the relevant work plan submitted to EPA. So I, I believe that was the section you're talking about. Just yeah, wanted part, to. Partially. Is there a part. date on that, Chris? Date on the. On, the, on what he just read. He's reading the from settlement the agreement. agreement. Um, What's the date? Chris is February 2020. Yeah, Chris is reading from the execu the, the the executed settlement agreement, and that's in there. So the the actual the date of the agreement, February 2020. 2020. Yeah, when they first announced it. Two and a half years ago. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, I I just before before we continue, we do have some some. Uh, some documents here, but I, I, I want to get to some of these questions that came in, but go ahead, Monica. This was one quick question. Hang, hang, uh, hold on one sec, sorry. I'm sorry, I just need to add something uh, to, the, to the last piece there and what Ann had said is, um, I, I agree with uh, uh, Chris about his, uh, what he said that the agreement would be in place. I don't think GE would agree with that. And what I'm looking at is, the, I mean, they, they would, they might just, which some people might like, some people might, might not like, but um, look at it, page two. And it says, this settlement agreement is intended to address all disputes between the parties regarding the 2016 permit, including those raised in the petitions to the EAB. And for everyone here, the EAB is the appellate uh, uh, board for, for when the, we, they, the, uh, the GE initially appealed. The parties recognize that the terms of the settlement agreement must be approved by each of the five towns making up the municipal committee, Great Barrington, Lee, Lenox, Sheffield, and Stockbridge. The terms of the settlement agreement are not severable or modifiable other than with the consent of the affected parties. I have no, I, no doubt that the EPA would take the position should we you know, back out of the agreement or wh whatever terms we're using that it still stands, the permit still stands, but GE might take a completely different tack. And they've been, the delay has been the, the, the order of the day for them. So um, I don't know, I don't know that they would take the same position as, as what I think and what you think EPA would do. Um, but so there is a, a non-severable uh, piece to the agreement that they might say, okay, if one town's out, we don't have to do anything. And we just got to mention the signature uh, was dated February 10th, 2020. Monica Ryan, um, as it's a known fact that the producers of the plastic liners for these dumps um, have not been able to come up with a liner yet that can accept PCBs safely, and that is a known fact by GE, by us, and by the EPA, how can they even come to this agreement and, and move forward with this plan when the plan is not possible yet? They're talking about doing a double liner, but the product that they want to use is not, does not exist yet on Earth, a safe product. So I would say that I would, I would suggest that we as a town uh, challenge the agreement um, on that one fact alone the fact that they're saying that they can do a dump in our town safely somehow. I don't believe that they can. I'm saying to them they can't do it safely because they don't even have a liner for it. So how can they, how can they live up to their end of the agreement and put something, what they say is safe, and, um, if the liner doesn't even exist yet? And they know it. They've, I've heard them say it on the call. So what is your statement to that, uh, attorneys? 
Is that a point we can challenge them on? Um, yeah. Okay. I, I, that was one of the things I thought if they're, excuse me, I, that's one of the things I thought I had in my notes that if you were to go forward with the Board of Health, mm -hmm. um, that might be, a, you know, an expert, a matter of expert opinion. I mean, it'd be something that has to be addressed. Um, EPA and GE have both committed in the RICRA permit to having um, a liner that's PCB compatible. I think that's the word. Uh, maybe you have it right there in front of you, but I think it's PCB compatible. And uh, um, getting it the right number of uh, mils thick, you can measure that. Um, and you know whether it's put in place correctly, you can monitor that. But whether or not it's PCB compatible, I'm certainly not an expert in any way on, on that subject. Um, but that would be uh, a basis for challenge of uh, GE's uh, action going forward. So it, just through the health department, not through you know, as a as a, a one party to the contract, you couldn't challenge it on that alone. I, I think mean, anyone with standing to challenge the the, the uh, permit would have the right to bring that forward and okay. see if they could get injunctive relief. Well, let's keep that in the hopper, please. No, I just wanted to mention it does say chemically compatible with PCBs. Thank you. Chemically compatible. So and right now the company that does make any kind of strong liners has already stated that they will not provide any kind of a warranty on their products. So, I mean, you know, they're saying that they're going to monitor it, but that's a joke. If it's, they're just going to watch it leak, you know, it just... So uh, to that point, it could very well be, and I don't know anything about the legal strategy that's in front of uh, the first district uh, with uh, who's a tonic river initiative, they're gone. But um, you know that could be part of their whole uh, legal argument also, mm -hmm. uh, to have it remanded and have everything taken out. So you might want to run that question by Tim too, because they may already be making that argument at a different level, but I think it's a great one for the Board of Health to keep in mind also. But thank you. Yeah. Hi, Josh Bloom from 204 West Park Street. Um, Bob had said that the purpose of this meeting was to explore to to explore the the consequences of withdrawing from the agreement based on the fact that the townspeople have, have overwhelmingly voted to rescind and pull out of that agreement. So far not the lawyers and not the, and not the select board members have presented their familiarity with those consequences. So I, I don't feel as though the people on the panel have come prepared to talk about what are those consequences. There, so far, no one has said that there would be anything consequential other than the $25 million and that we would lose our ability to, to coordinate, which doesn't mean that we have the authority on anything of these other points. So I'm asking where, when does the select board plan to take action on the townspeople's vote to rescind and withdraw from this agreement? Okay, well, as I said, we had two, uh, two town meetings with, uh, with the town reps who overwhelmingly voted to rescind. They didn't, they, I didn't know all the ramifications. I was just outraged at the, at the process. Okay, so we, we got it on the, uh, on the ballot this year. Two to one, the, the people of the town believe voted to rescind. Okay, I thought it was important to have this, I'm speaking for myself, I thought it was important to have this meeting and it will be continued. I wanna make damn sure that the voters of Lee understand the ramifications of withdrawing from this agreement, okay? We are, we are, we actually, if we wanted to take a vote tonight based upon what's already been, we'd be rescinding this, this agreement. But I wanna be absolutely certain that my friends and my neighbors and my constituents understand, you know, what we're getting into. We're, we've been, and we're talking about it. We're gonna lose the seat at the table. We're gonna lose $25 million. Uh, uh, I want everybody to understand that so that I can, I can make an intelligent decision when it comes to move this. When exactly that's going to happen, I can't say. That I don't know. But we're working in that direction. We're gonna run this meeting for another, another 20 minutes, half hour, and, and then we're gonna continue it. And then I expect to hear from people. I expect to hear from people. And if I don't hear from people, if you didn't vote, if you didn't call your town rep, I mean, we don't have town reps anyway, but if, if you haven't done anything on your hands, 
the nobody is going to speak for you, okay? Nobody's going to speak for you. And I see the same faces here. I mean, we've got a town of 5,000 people. Look at this. Look at the empty seats, okay? But CTSB is here tonight. The Eagle's going to be watching this, this footage. The Edge is going to be watching this footage. If you can't take the time, as, a, as my friend and neighbor, to make yourself aware of all the ramifications and help me make my decision, then I'm going to make my decision based upon what every, the people that do what, what they tell me to do, okay? It may be at the end of these meetings, may, maybe we'll have people sta standing up and saying, you know what? It's going to cost money to rescind this thing. I didn't know that, you know? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how silly, silly you'd have to be to think that, but there is, there is going to be a battle. There's going to be a price to be paid. And we're trying to ascertain exactly what that is. None of us knows all the answers. None of us has all the answers. But that's why we're here. Okay? And, and, and we just have to separate our opinions from the facts. And I'm here to get facts. And in the end, I really just, based upon everything that's, that's happened thus far, what's happening tonight and what's going to happen in the next meeting or two meetings, whatever it takes, that's the way I'm going to go. Sure. Josh, I, I just want to reiterate Bob's point about, you know, what it could cost the town, right? We, we, you take the, the money from GE off the table, we take we take all the, the seat at the table, whatever else, that's all gone, nobody cares about that. Well, we're going to have to pay somebody to represent us, potentially against, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, no, no outbursts, thank you. Um, uh, we're going to potentially have to defend ourselves against cases. I don't know that there will be, but I don't know that there won't be. And then we're also going to have to pay somebody to represent us to try to fight against this and stop this. That's going to cost a lot of money with no certainty that it's gonna, we're going to succeed and the outcome may still result in a PCB landfill. So I, I feel that, that that frightens me and that... that um, to to make that decision for the town as a as an entirety and and potentially cost the taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars in a fight that we're going to lose is is not some is, and and to wind up with the result of of where the permit's going to head anyway that that seems to me like a worse situation than what we would what we would be in without that but go ahead but hey, Gordon do you want to well, no, I guess my only additional thought was, you know, we don't know. We're here to start gathering this, and we would, we're would we not going to make a decision tonight, and we're going to continue. We're going to hear more things, and I'd like to get more in-depth as to what could it cost the town. <laughs> what are the issues? Um, you know, if, you know, what are the possibilities? Uh, and, and nobody knows. Nobody has a crystal ball. But I'd like to be more comfortable Knowing what our what the potentials may be, um, I, I don't. You know, I have, I have a couple more questions before we leave tonight. I want everybody to think about before we come and meet again. But I'll I'll hold. I, I don't want to interrupt the flow of this particular question. But I, I would like to bring up an issue that I think is absolutely going to be valuable to us going forward. Thank you, John Cody, Fifty First Street Lee. <clears throat> Bob, I'll try to give you my opinion at least. Sure. <laughs> I believe as a town we need to have as much input and influence as possible to protect our community and find any possible benefits for the town and its residents along the way of this process. We are considering giving up our oversight and a voice in how this cleanup progresses and the ability to ensure that this cleanup has the least amount of short-term and long-term negative effects on our town. By removing ourselves from the rest of the river agreement, I struggle to understand why anyone with the best interest in our entire town would consider this a wise decision. I implore our selectmen to carefully consider what I think is in the best interest of the entire town and continue to participate in the rest of the river agreement and not flush our participation, input, input and influence along with our tax dollars down the river. Let's work within the agreement to protect the town's best interests as much as possible instead of sitting on the sidelines and leaving the fate of this town in the hands of other participants of the rest of the river agreement. Thanks. Jim Castagnero, 111 Woodland Road. And 
I hope my uh, family, family's health matters to the people. Lee, I know it don't matter to some of you, but it matters to me, and, and uh, the health of my neighborhood matters to me. I'm here to represent my neighborhood. You, you want to talk about repercussions? You guys worry about GE? We're, we're going to sue the hell out of you guys. You put this dump in. I mean, we're talking hundred million dollars here. We're going to have class action suits against you. I mean, you better think about that too. I mean, I'm, we're already getting poisoned up there, and and the wind blows from that direction. It's two thirds the time a year. So I get, I, I could breathe that asphalt half the year. I have to shut my windows because that blows over the hill. I, I don't understand. We never had a, a, a place at the table for this. This is ridiculous. This whole thing's ridiculous. And you talk about repercussions. There's going to be repercussions, and it's going to be awesome. Here's my question. What are the provisions in the town of Lee's insurance policies as far as liability of the future dump and the health and ecological impacts of the, of the people in Lee? I didn't quite catch that. Sorry. Jim, you, you walked away, Jim, but let, let me, we, we, aren't, we want to make sure we understand what you're asking. You're asking if the town's insurance would, would cover, okay, so if they could prove that it's from that, would the town be any way liable other than above and beyond GE, because EPA aren't going to sue them and get anything, um, maybe GE. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, I don't personally have an idea, and I think it's something we'll have to get back to you on. In my opinion, is we could look into that and check with our insurer. Uh, I don't know that the attorneys would be able to, make, they may already know what our insurance policy says, but I, I don't. But I'll be happy to write that down as something we'll get back to you on. All right, Tim, no problem. Unless you know, I don't know. I, I have no idea what your insurance yeah. says. All the insurance policies have exclusions for hazardous materials, but. Steve Andell, 35 Church Street. Uh, Bobby and I discussed a few minutes ago, but I thought I'd bring it up here to, the, to everybody. What I understand is this is a contract with consideration. The consideration is, right, GE and GE is paying $25 million to the town of Lee and we have some obligations under the contract, but mostly we're allowing this dump in our town, right? That's why they're giving us this money, to compensate us for putting this dump in town and trucking the PCBs through the town, and yes, we're gonna mon help them monitor and all these things we're supposed to do. So why should we automatically assume if we try to you know, stop them from creating this dump uh, in town, an injunction, a legal injunction, I guess, and then it goes to court and the judge says, nope, I'm sorry, we're still doing it. Why should we automatically assume you're not getting the 25 million? That's their part of the contract. We have our duties, you know, we're allowing them to put this here and you know, they're giving us money. You know, to me an analogy would be, I agree with you to sell you my house. Now I don't want to sell your house anymore, so we go to court and and the judge says, well, you need to give them your house, but you're not getting the money anymore. That doesn't make sense. You know, I mean, maybe I'm simplifying this, but it doesn't make sense. And uh, so please, you know, why is, it, why is it automatically assumed we're losing $25 million? In fact, I think it could just as well go the other way. In other words, G may say, what's it gonna take for you guys to stop fighting this. You know, we'll double that money, we'll give you 50 million. I'm not saying that will happen, but it could. Couldn't it? I mean, why is it automatically assumed we're not getting any money if we fight this unless that itself was in the contract? Sometimes in contracts they have things like that. If anybody, any party fights this and you signed it, you're not getting anything, like a will or something, I don't know. But um, any, any response to that? I don't have any, dude. I guess if I could just... I mean, why would they make one party execute but not the other? I, I, think, I think all too much gets made out of the money. I mean, it's honestly, it is a slap in the face. It's a bit of an insult. I mean, and nobody here really cares about the money. If, if, if you, you know, I wrote, a, I wrote a letter where I said, you know, if, I, if it were my decision to do 
what to do with the money, I would put it right back into remediation, trying to sure. be a part of the solution of this stuff. I mean, that to me would be good use of the $25 million, but that's just my yeah. opinion. Yeah, All right, as, well, as town council, I'm, I'm not going to sit it here in a public forum and say they're getting out of the $25 million. We're going to do everything we can to hold them to that. Right. Well, why should we assume that? I understand that. Okay, part two of this is back to the Board of Health real quick. If the Board of Health holds an education, whatever that word is, a meeting, okay, and holds a legal meeting where our experts come in and tell, tell them how horrible PCBs are and it's dangerous to public health and all that stuff, and we invite GE and the EPA, but they don't show up, well, then I guess the Board of Health needs to make their decision on whatever information they already have from the GE and the EPA and what they're hearing from our experts. And then they can, it sounds sound to me, it's just like, you know, they make a decision, if they say, well, we don't think it's safe and you didn't want to fight it, then you lose. We made our decision to do that. It's kind of like a policeman gives you a ticket, you go to court and he doesn't show up. Who wins? So why, why could it go that way? Why can't they have the meeting anyway? Who cares if they don't show up? Actually, Steve, that's the exact point I made at the Board of Health meeting uh, when they were talking about whether GE would show or not, and that's the very point I made, was who cares if they don't show? If we have all this information and nobody wants to rebut it, then you make your decision based on the information in front of you, which is what we're trying to get to information so we can make our decision, right. you know, as far as what we're doing. Um, so I, I agree with your point on that exactly, you know. It, it's up to GE to either come and try and defend or not. If, if the Board of Health decides, in fact, they want to do the hearing, the adjudicatory uh, hearing. And I did write down what they, uh, what Bob Westweiser felt he needed for support, and we'll be talking about that, looking into it to see what that means and how we can fund that kind of support if that's what they're looking for, and whether it's to our advantage to do that. Um, I, I do have one, one question to think about and mull over before our next meeting is, you know, we're talking about, oh, what's the disadvantage if we get out? Uh, my other question is, what's the advantage? So I want to, this is a legal question I'd like to have posed for later, not, not an answer right now, or people say, oh, well, you know. But I'd like to know what the advantage might be if we do get out of the agreement. Is there an advantage? You know, do we gain certain rights uh, that we don't have right now because we gave them up in the agreement? So that's just one thing I'd like to know as we go forward and Gordon. we and we have another meeting. What are what is our advantage? And the other thing to think about also, and I, I mentioned it to the attorneys a few minutes ago. Um, I read that GE is actually trying to split into three companies, which I think it's totally laughable that they have a health division anyway, uh, with all the, <laughs> with all the all the poison that they've given uh, America, not just Berkshire County. They've spread this far and wide. You know, I, I think it's just such a, a mockery of, of what, you know, what health is about, that they would have a health division. But I think it's more about actually making equipment than it is anything else, their health part. Um, but they've got three different divisions. So my question I think we need to get to the EPA right away about is they need to amend this permit from them to make sure that every one of those three divisions is going to be codependent, you know, co-responsible, that they aren't going to throw it on one division that may eventually, f you know, fail or not have the funds to back up uh, the rest of this. So that's something that I, I, I will pose out there for us to be thinking about and see if, uh, number one, that's one of the things I want to go to the EPA about. And also a list of streets, uh, the EPA during my, I brought this up at Selectman's meeting, at my meeting with the EPA on site was that they said, if you have a list of streets you don't want the trucks to go on, give it to us, and we will tell them in the permit not to go on those streets. So we're working on that. We'll see if that holds up, see if they'll do that. I don't know. You know, I have, I, I have very little faith in, in the governmental process we're going through right now. Um, but I would say, you know, the proof is in the pudding, as they say. You know, let's, let's get to, to the EPA and tell them these are things that we're demanding. Let's see if they'll put it in there. You know, but let's do that sooner than later. You know, I don't want to wait until the first, you know, until the federal lawsuit is settled one way or another. I want to go first. 
Um, anyway, those are just some things I want to think about before we meet right. again. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Gordon, just to add to that question, is mentioned, is there any advantage to rescinding yeah. Yeah. ROR? I, I guess I would just want to add to that. We've, we've had two things come up tonight of potential avenues, um, you know, whether, whether they're good or bad, two things have come up, um, the Board of Health uh, and the, an injunction on a liner. So I guess what I'd like to hear a little more about is does rescinding rest of river give us any advantage in those two things, or can we do those without rescinding? Um, you know, was there, is there any reason we need to rescind in order to do those? So. Again, to that point, I think that uh, in, in reading through all this paperwork, um, and I would uh, defer to the attorneys, uh, maybe for the next meeting as they investigate a little more, but it's my understanding that uh, part of the agreement that was signed, the rest of the agreement, actually kind of ties the hands of the town to disagree or to file a lawsuit. So that, again, might be an advantage for leaving, but I think we need to know more about that aspect, you know, in balance, what's that advantage of maybe joining HRI as a, as, you know, a friend of the court or something as a community, um, you know, going forward, is that an option? And how would that balance against potential damages? Although we've heard maybe there is no damage to GE, but I think that we need to keep that in mind as, you know, how, how would we be affected by that as a community? That's all. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna we're we're getting close. Uh, yeah. We're getting close here on time, so I just want to field a couple more questions. Hey, Chris, Chris, did you want to field Bill's? Uh, one second. Um, why don't you Why don't you do one, and then I'll get this okay. next. I just want to check the area. Bill, should I read the crossed out part or skip over that? <laughs> at, at the recent EPA public hearings, the question was asked why the draft permit did not explore using railroad rather than dump trucks for both local and long distance transportation of PCBs. The question was dismissed by the EPA representative saying multiple alternatives have all been explored against several different criteria, yet a careful reading of the material on EPA website reveals multiple alternatives involve, uh, all involving dump trucks. There's no genuine discussion of a rail alternate, alternative. So I think to that, to that point, and I think what I've come to realize is that rail really, all, it's still gonna be traveling through our town. All it does is kind of get the material off the roads. That's, that's the big piece of that, right? Yeah, so next part, moreover, a recent town meeting, an article advocating a rail alternative was passed by a subst uh, substantial margin indicating a positive sense by that legislative body that rail transportation should be seriously considered. Is the town administration willing to pursue this matter further by obtaining from the EPA through FOIA or other legal means all spreadsheets and internal documents that bear EPA's opposition to using rail as a viable alternative and making those documents available for the public and identify review. I, I'm definitely for exploring that and, and trying to our best to, to utilize the most efficient ways. Um, there's a couple more parts here. You, let me just, I'll just keep reading. Separate questions. So next question. The EPA website gives a clear impression that the permit must subsequently be responded to by a satisfactory work plan from GE before actual implementation, implementation begins. But recent news reports indicate that EPA has already given GE a go ahead for initial steps towards constructing the dump. This appears to be a violation of EPA's own stated protocol. Does the town administration have any ability to enforce a cease and desist order on these activities? I don't think we do, but I would defer to uh, our legal counsel for that. Did you get that? Well, in addition to uh, what my brother said about preemption, the, uh, the agreement as it stands prohibits us from challenging the permit expressly. Mm -hmm. OK. 
Okay, uh, last question here I have, and I think we'll, we'll discuss uh, continuing this meeting. Um, one of the arguments GE used to deflect PCB cleanup from the Hudson was that the river cleaning itself faster than any active remediation could. It, could, it took years to show that this argument had no merit. GE, GE's data was shown to be meritless, but only through careful comparison with historic measurements. Before proceeding with the Housatonic cleanup, an entire an entirely new an entirely new round of PCB measurements will need to be obtained. <clears throat> The previous me measurements are shown on EPA's website in the form of stack bar maps for each reach showing the location, depth, and concentration of PCBs at, at thousands of locations from Pittsfield all the way to the state line in Sheffield. However, the measurements on the map of Reach 7 from Woods Pond Dam to the gazebo near Lee Post Office are completely bogus. Uh, the map has been incorrect for 20 years, probably because of a software glitch. Importantly, this leaves us without a basis for comparing the plausibility of any new measurements through a significant portion of Lee. Is the town administration willing to demand that corrected historical measurements be provided by EPA? Yeah, I would, I would definitely uh, support trying to get that uh, error corrected. Um, they, they did conduct, as part of the agreement, that, uh, the EPA did conduct 20,000 or, or so soil samples along the river. So they, I think they have new, new data. Um, maybe we can, we can uh, get that sourced. Can we start the next meeting with Bill's questions? Sure. They're full of stuff, full of important stuff. I'm having a hard time hearing you, Sean. Okay. You're kind of tapering off a little bit. So I, can we please do his questions over at the next meeting we, that we have, please? Uh, yeah, I, I w I'll, we can distill them a little bit better and, and bring them to our next meeting. Um, so at this point, you know, it's 9 o'clock. Um, when, when are we all free to do this again. <laughs> Can we try for two weeks? I hate to have go two too weeks. far. Two weeks is the uh, first. Too far. Oh, okay. Then. Um, two weeks would be the first of September. It's a. Thir it's still a Thursday, obviously. It's okay. well, we have to check with the town. Maybe what we have to do is check. Uh, not the town. The school. The, so. the school. Yeah. Yeah. We'll check with the school and with the attorneys, and let's come up with a date. I'm sure we could announce it at our next look. Or we yeah. Can, we can post it sooner than that on the website if we get a date. I think so. And this this not being a, a hearing per se, we, we don't, we're not like bound to continuing it to a certain date. So. No. If, um, the, if the board, while we're while we're here as a board discussing if that works for me, I can look into that and get back to the board mm -hmm. and see if the September first is is available. If the. So everybody, everybody's shaking their head. So um, with that, I would ask for a motion to adjourn, and we will continue this hopefully at, septem at the September 1st date, but possibly another date we will post and keep everybody abreast of that. And Sean, I will keep the um, right in the news section of the website. It's right on the front page. The PCB forum, I will update the data on there as well as in the meeting schedule. So it'll be right on that main page. I'd make a motion to adjourn.